Good morning and welcome to TMX Adventures. Lisa here. Hey, we are preparing for Father's Day here uh, today and I am making some mini cheesecakes. These are Basque cheesecakes. They are a burnt style cheesecake making four mini ones and it takes a whole of four ingredients. I'm actually going to add a bonus fifth ingredient today as well. When you're watching on, tell me if you have made these before or maybe you've made the traditional really big, beautiful, luscious cheesecake. That's on Cookie Do as well. If you have, let us know. This is a Danny Valant recipe uh, very many years ago pre having cookie do uh, in Australia we had her cookbooks available I'm not sure if they're still in the mixture but worth checking out but yeah say hi if you're watching on um, I know it is a Saturday so some of you guys may not be uh, you may be out and about doing other things but we're preparing here I've got a few things that I'm making to create a grazing box for which the family can create their own cheesecakes or portions of cheesecakes. So there's things like chocolate uh, chocolate fudge sauce, there's a caramel sauce, they're both out of my Easter grazing box series. Uh, there's a jam, there is a coolie, there are fresh berries and things like that as well. I made a beautiful shortbread yesterday which came out phenomenally. If you've never made shortbread, give that a go. I was blown away by how easy it was uh, and how amazing it's turned out. Like it's it's beautiful. I don't know. I'm I'm hiding it in the cupboard till tomorrow because it may not last that long otherwise. So anyway, these are the centerpiece, and all the other stuff is going to go round. So I'm really excited. I love the grazing boxes, by the way. I don't know if the meat shop still sells them either, but I love that concept. Whenever we go somewhere to someone's house, I take something in it, whether it be a cake or a slice or uh, a dip, like all multitudes of dips and homemade crackers. I really do love both sizes. I use them regularly. Let's get cracking on this recipe. It's a super quick recipe. You preheat your oven to 300. In all honesty, this is the step that takes the longest. Oh, those of you on YouTube, uh, and those of you, so YouTube, I tend to come back and finish things. So those of you on Facebook, you guys are catching me live. But if a recipe has multiple steps, especially with distance between them, that's when I tend to put on YouTube because you guys then I can put the videos together, right? And you guys see the beginning and the end and stuff like that. So YouTubers, thanks for joining on. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button, okay? But back to the recipe. This is a step that takes the longest. You need to get your little mini molds and you need to spray them or grease them with butter, put baking paper in and around, and the around has to be higher because in the oven you'll watch it go up and then it kind of sinks down with a little bow in the middle, which is perfect for putting your toppings on. Oh, there will be cheese in the toppings too. So those little rose bowls are in the mix shop as well. By the way, those of you in Australia, they launched the My Mix Rewards program last week. Okay, so that gives you the chance when you sign up to get $15 to spend in the next six months. Haven't had much chance to share this with you guys. Um, so things like your rose gold, if they still have those other items I mentioned available, you can use your $15 towards that. So check that out. Please, of course, as usual, make sure uh, my name's displayed before you hit the checkout button. All right, really appreciate your support. We get a little kickback from Thermomix. It doesn't cost you any more for that. It purely means that those that inspire you to get those bits and pieces for your kitchen actually get honored in that process. And thank you to those who do remember to take the time to do that. Hello, Leanne, let me see you on. So this is the step that takes the longest, okay? The rest is super easy. Four eggs. Now you'll notice today my four eggs, I've got four bantam eggs and, and two real size eggs, okay? So if you're wondering why she got six yolks, there is varying sizes of eggs from bantams to proper eggs in there, okay? So it's the equivalent of four eggs, trust me. Okay, four eggs, in they go. Insert the measuring cup into the mixing bowl lid then 20 seconds, speed four, it's just whipping them up. How good is the Thermomix at doing this for us? Before the Thermomix, egg beater, remember those things? And then you get them jammed and you have to go backwards to unjam them and go forwards again. Or an electric mixer, so if the Thermomix it does it for us. We can use the preview button on the right hand side to see what we need to do next. I've got the ingredients out today, I don't need to, but you would be going and grabbing your cream cheese. By the way, if you don't want to make all this amount, say you're just making dessert for a special occasion for you and your other half or something like that, of course, having four eggs, it's a pretty easy recipe to quarter. We can make one or half or even three quarters because it's a nice number of eggs, yeah? So four eggs is easy to split this up. All right, cream cheese. I know in the past, before this recipe became available on Cookie Do, um, I used to use the very large one and I would just, I think it's got eight eggs. 
to make a full size cheesecake and I would just portion that down and make a small one for hubby and I. So that's how we used to do it. Okay, 650 grams of cream cheese cut into hunks. Okay, I did this yesterday. I actually was hoping to come to you live yesterday with this, but uh, my computer decided that it was full. It was full of videos, it was done. And so I had to spend the afternoon and evening deleting files. <laughs> so I didn't get to bring this. Hence the reason I'm so organized this morning. Oh, with the lid. Okay, 30 seconds speed four, off this goes. Now that was straight out of the fridge and it's okay. I'll talk in a second, it's a bit noisy. but I wanted to show you what it was and it wasn't splattery because it's so thick and it's moved out by that stage it was pretty safe to take that off and show you guys but like look at that already how good is that does it say scrape down the sides because I'm tempted to get yeah I'm tempted to get this um egg that's splattered up to the lid into the mix because that is your setting agent in this recipe now I said it's just four ingredients we're halfway there already by the way um dairy free friends I'm sorry, it's not for you, <laughs> okay? Uh, when we used to be very much very dairy-free years ago, um, I used to do this, actually I wouldn't do this, I would make cheesecakes with macadamia, okay? And I would blend those macadamias until they were like a macadamia cream cheese, and it was phenomenal. Um, so that would be my suggestion. If you are dairy-free and you're like, I miss that cream cheesiness, um, that would be my suggestion. It's not the same, but it's pretty amazing still, okay? Okay, wants us to redo that step. So 30 seconds on speed five, measuring cup in. This is where we're gonna grab your cream. This is when you've got a little bit of flour. I'm using gluten-free flour in the next step. And I'm gonna add one bonus ingredient, which I'll tell you about in a second. ingredient in this recipe of vanilla purely because oh sugar it's got sugar too it's got five ingredients plus a bonus six I forgot about that what I was gonna say though about the vanilla is otherwise to me it's just too cream like and that is completely a personal opinion okay five uh, 200 grams of white sugar okay so you may um, decide that I'm gonna pull it a whisker short. Does it make that much of a difference? Probably not. It's, it's a cheesecake. It's a special occasion. Um, but yeah, the vanilla to me just um, cuts through that cheesiness. <laughs> no, it's a cheesecake. That sounds so incredibly daft. Has a video. It says to put your spatula through the lid. I'm going to try not to only because I actually didn't bring a spatula with me. I've pulled out the drawer. In my tech troubles, I had to see where my camera was going this morning, and so I don't have that spatula just in hand's reach. And I reckon it'll be okay. It sounds okay. It's okay. Hello, Amanda. Lovely to see you.
and lovely to see you both on. I don't think I needed to get that spatula, okay? I went and dashed and got it because I looked at the sides of the bowl and I'll just show you what I was looking at because you, you know they'll like to teach you about what I'm thinking and why I do it. So hopefully then when you're making things, you can kind of make those same judgment calls. What I could see around inside was that this, this film around the edge and I thought, oh, maybe that's what they want me to use the spatula to try and incorporate. It didn't work, you can't reach it, okay? <laughs> I don't think you need a spatula at that point in time. It's pretty soft, it's pretty amazing. It looks divine. Okay, 300 grams of pouring whipping cream, in it goes. Okay, we've taken to shopping every fortnight and last fortnight I couldn't actually get cream so I had to make a special trip to the supermarket yesterday on Friday afternoon to buy the cream. It was out of stock when we shopped. Hello Roz, lovely to see you on. Okay, on with the lid and the measuring cup. Ah, I'm going to at this point in time add my vanilla to cut through the creamy cheesiness. Okay, totally pref up to you as to whether you do that. All right, there we go. It's just a dab, homemade vanilla. There is a video for that on YouTube. Check that out. Okay, 30 seconds. Oh, measuring cup. Always put your measuring cup in like when it says to. I know that I show you a peak sometimes, but I'm fairly certain that I'm not gonna wear my mix and it's never a hot one when I'm showing you. It's always cold, okay? But when you first start off, that's when you're gonna get the slush, okay? Nelly done, last ingredient is the flour. I'm gonna use gluten-free. Uh, Leanne, great question. She's asking in the comments, where do I get my beans from? These ones are from Honest to Goodness, but typically I keep an eye out on Vanilla and Co. They are, well they were online and they often do sales where they're getting rid of the ones that are coming up to expiry or they're second class, they're like B grade or lower. Um, and Vanilla doesn't really expire. It's a bit like dates. They will get a, like, um, they will crystallize because they're so sugar high contented. Oh, what's it telling me to do? 30 seconds, another mix. Uh, it wants me to mix again. Let's just straighten the side. Um, because it's got such a high content of sugar, they don't actually expire. They just dry out, they dehydrate. Um, and they get in that dehydration process, they get sugar crystals in it. There is a, a sugar mold. It's not a bad mold. I'll come back, hang on. short it says mix to worse smooth where we we're pretty smooth before we got to that step <laughs> so it's okay um, they can get what's called sugar mold on them and it's not a bad mold it's when it actually it's it is a film on it it's not that crystallization it's a film it's white you'll often buy it your dates if you buy supermarket dates I've actually sometimes already got that around the seed inside and then it's not gonna harm you always check there's not bugs in them okay the couple of times I have bought dates from the supermarket you open them up and there are little critters that are no longer with us. <laughs> They're dead in the centre. And I've had to return plenty of packets of supermarket dates over the years. I don't actually buy them that often. It's a backup for when we run out of our bulk stuff. Uh, but back to the vanilla beans. Just shop around and, and see what you can find. The great thing is that, like, they're expensive but they keep. I just keep them airtight and I keep them in the freezer. Uh, so that then when I'm going to make the next batch of this, uh, it's there. I can just put them in with some cheap vodka and it infuses. I then take some of those out. I'll use them for the next vanilla paste. I will put some good ones in with vanilla paste as well because sometimes they kind of lost their flavor. So, yeah, it's um, I do really enjoy it. It's really hard to not have it homemade once you've done it though. Like you'll make it and you'll be like, this is standout. That though does take six to eight months to infuse. Uh, the um, paste is far, it's, it's immediately, it's far faster. 
So once you get in a rotation of it though, it's amazing. If you want to make some for people for Christmas, now would be the time. Okay, so if you want to buy some little bottles, you can get the little cute bottles and put a vanilla bean in each of those with some vodka. Now would be like the perfect time to do that and we'll be done. I mean, it's only four or five months, but you're also only infusing a small amount. Okay, so if you're thinking about that for Christmas gifts, now's the time. All right, let's finish this off. It's got a two minute blitz, which I love this. This is the time you clean up your kitchen, yeah? And then pretty much we're gonna pour it in and finish it. It's gonna be cool. Five seconds that'll do. A um, little tip when you're lining those little um, spring forms, okay? You are better off doing the sides first with the 10 centimeter extra on them and then pushing your center circle down inside. It kind of, I'm having trouble. Now, admittedly, these were done yesterday afternoon and so they've been sitting here waiting. But you can see here that this is barely holding in and holding out now. And even yesterday, some of them were not great. Then I thought afterwards, if I push that center down last, it would actually be what holds that out to the side. So do that when you're doing yours, okay? So that you don't have this challenge I do where I'm gonna keep pushing them out to the sides. I'm fairly certain that's enough, what I've done there. So now let me turn this camera backwards and let's show you what's gonna happen behind. Let's see if I can undo this and make it happen. There we go, do it back up. Sorry if that's making a noise on your, on your microphone things. Okay, now the other cheesecake, the big one, cooks for quite a long time. Look at that. Oh, you guys can kind of see that. Sorry if you can't see it well. I'm gonna stop a centimetre from the top of the tin um, and then I'll even it out as we go in a moment. So the other one cooks for quite a long time, but being these are so small, you can see it's only got that 35 to 40 minute cook time, which is good. Hoping you guys can see this process. And I'll tell you, hopefully I've left enough for this last one. Oh yeah, heaps. Okay. So, and I'm fairly certain these rose gold are what is supposed to be used. But I think we now go to, I'll tell you how close to the top. So that if you have these rose gold, you know how far to fill them. By the way, it is quite a filling dish. Like, I did think about splitting this six ways, the six of us, but I think I'm just going to cut these into wedges and, and people can have wedges. It is so filling. Like, it's you know, cream cheese, it's cream. Like, it, it is quite a filling thing. So, all right. So, we're about, it is close to a centimetre, probably just under a centimetre from the top is how far you'll want to fill them. As I said, this 10 centimetre extra is where it allows, us, it allows it to rise and then fall back down with a bit of a sink into it, okay? So that there, I hope you managed to catch that pouring, is how we put them in. So one other thing just to be mindful of, when you are preheating your oven, only because I forgot to do this, because they're so high, it is worth taking one of your mid trays out or mid shelves out so that you've got plenty of oven space for the height of this. Okay, I'm going to need to get my oven gloves on and manhandle the uh, wire shelf out so that I've got space. But it's 200 degrees, 35 to 40 minutes, until just set but dark caramelised on the outside. So it is supposed to be burnt-ish looking. It is going to have that caramelised, over caramelised look to it. Okay, that's why I believe Basque is like burnt. That's the concept. Cool in the tins for 30 minutes, then release the sides of the tin and remove the paper. Serve with fresh cherries or berries, optional. It is best cold, 
okay, or Nelly Cole if you can't wait for cold. Uh, not a warm one because it needs to set, set, okay, otherwise it's gonna, those eggs will be soft still. But I hope this has given you some ideas and inspiration for your Thermomix. Um, if you've got questions as you make this, let me know. If you need double this amount, so you've got like two sets of rose gold because you're doing an event or something like that, um, use the original recipe because it's got eight, so it just doubles all this up as it goes. Although that was a big bowl, <laughs> so it must be a massive, it probably needs a spatula in that step because of the quantity in the bowl, whereas we didn't, we have a smaller quantity in the bowl. But uh, let us know what you're making over the weekend. Share some pictures if you are doing something for Father's Day. I'd love to see the pictures of what you make. Um, I hope you found yesterday's post where I gave you some ideas and inspiration. We've got results currently in the process of being made for Brecky. We are doing the silky scrambled eggs. We'll do the steamed tomatoes and greens. Uh, the hollandaise sauce is going to be pre-made today and things like that. So uh, let us know what you make. I'd love to hear from you and see your pictures of what you're doing. And if you need anything, reach out. I'd love to hear from you. I may get back today. There is one more little treaty thing that goes on this platter that I'd like to bring that to you so we'll just see how we're going there's a little bit of chaos because all the children are helping in the kitchen today making things so I've got to find a quiet moment where I can come and show you guys as well so hopefully I'll get a chance to come on later and show you that but otherwise have a great weekend take care of what you're doing and let me know if I can help you or someone you know with a thermomix but take care and I'll see you then bye for now